Graves. Well done, John. How significant does that feel? Yeah, it's a big po uh, three points for us. I think after the other day, the um, overriding feeling after the game was we've, we've dropped two points and should have got more out of the game. And um, yeah, we wanted to put it right today. And I think how we uh, especially played in the second half was, was brilliant. And to come away with three points is, is just what we needed. There was a huge difference between your performance first half and second half. What made that difference? I don't know. I think um, maybe the belief. Um, I think we rushed a lot of the, our play in the first half and tried to play um, too many passes, crucial passes that got cut out and, and didn't retain the ball as good as we usually do. And, and we uh, we spoke at half time and knew we had to, to use the ball better and, and wait for the spaces to open. And credit to Chelsea, they played really compact. We couldn't get th many, many balls through the lines today and we had to play, trying to give as, as much as I can for the team as well. Does this win also as well give impetus in the hunt to chase Arsenal down now? Yeah, I think, you know, we, we don't focus on, on, on the table so early. I think as the manager said before this game, there were 66 points to play for, 63 now. Um, still a long way to go and we've got to take it game at, a game at a time. And I think in previous years we've gone on, on big runs as well, winning runs. And, you know, we've got to keep the momentum going. Um, if we perform like we did today, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll have a fighting chance towards the end of the season. Well, you certainly played your part and that's why you are the player of the match. Well done, John. Thank you, mate. Yes, John Stones, player of the match, but arguably the man who made the biggest difference is standing right next to us now, Jack Grealish. Congratulations. It was a tight one, wasn't it, Jack? It was, yeah. Um, I was just saying to, to Karen then, you know, uh, off air, like, it was... Obviously, they've got a few injuries, you know, they had two at the start of the game also. So it was one of them games, you know, especially for me sitting on the bench thinking, oh, you know, we could dominate this. Um, and it weren't the, weren't the case at all, you know. I think it was a, a tough game. I thought Chelsea would play brilliant, especially in certain parts of the game, especially in the first half, you know, they probably had more chances. Um, but yeah, you know, we obviously got the goal and after that it was um, backs against the wall really. So uh, no, we're just obviously buzzing, you know, to, to come here and get three points because we know how, how tough it is to, to come here. But it was a very different second half. Was it quite lively in there at half time? Yeah, it was. Obviously, I'm not going to go into too much detail. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, obviously, you know, the manager changed a few things, uh, you know, had a few words um, with us. And yeah, I think we come out and, you know, I think for the first, you know, 20, 30 minutes, especially in the second half, you know, we dominated, had more chances. And, you know, I think um, obviously once we got the goal, we felt like we had we had control of the game, uh, but, you know, they still had a fair few themselves. Yeah, well, one goal was enough, Jack. You obviously had a big part to play in it with the assist um, for Riyad, who had also come off the bench. Talk us through your role in it here. I haven't actually seen it back yet. Um... You're, You're just staying up. wide. You're <laughs> hugging the touchline <laughs> on this side. Yeah, no, that's what, obviously, the manager said to me. You know, he says, when you come on, you know, be aggressive, um, you know, attack Aspilicueta and, and stay high and wide, which I've done here. Um... Do you know what? It was weird because I was just speaking to Riyad then inside and he says to me, he was like, he thought the keeper was going to get it at one point. And so did I. When I've crossed it, the first thing, I've put my head down to cross it and straight away I'm thinking, nah, Erling's got to be somewhere. <laughs> but obviously, <laughs> he, he's be so you're just hitting a space, are you? I'm just hitting because obviously he's always in there, isn't he? And I just says to him, I says, where was you in there? And he says, he goes, because everyone went, he goes, I pulled back. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I felt like the, the keeper was going to get it at one point. But Did you expect him to? I don't know. I, I don't know. Now I'm going to praise my cross. And that is, <laughs> but I, well, I, I mean, well, honestly, well. when it when it obviously went across the goal, yeah, the first time I've looked up, I thought I've played that too close to him. Do you know what I mean? But Jack, how have you found it at at, uh, at City? Uh, you are a player that comes off the line and 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 try to find spaces and. Pepper likes his wide players to stay wide and high and be disciplined and, and and wait for the moment and you want the ball. How have you how have you found it? Do you know what I, I've said before a few times? It's it's so much different to, to what I was used to. Obviously, I don't want to keep going back to Aston no. Villa, but to what I was used <laughs> to at Aston Villa. You know when. I uh, played for like Dean Smith and stuff. He'd say to me, you know, go and find where you think the weak link is in the defence. If you want to go on the right, in the middle, if you want to hug the touchline. Um, and just certain stuff, you know, at, City, at Villa, I always had like an overlapping fullback and, and stuff like this. So coming to City, 
I've been at Villa my whole life, you know, and I've never had to change. I've, I've always been used to that. I didn't realise how hard it is, you know, to adapt to another team and another manager. Um, and then when I come here, I'll be honest with you, it was so much more difficult than I thought. I, I, in my head, I was thinking, you know, going to a team that's sitting top of the league and going to get so many goals and assists. <laughs> and obviously, it isn't the case. You know, it's so much more difficult. You know, a lot of teams do tend to sit in against us, which is obviously wasn't the case at, at, at Villa, you know. So, Jack, do you think then in, in games like this where it's been tough the first half, actually sitting and seeing the game pan out coming on as a sub like you did and making the impact actually sometimes better yeah obviously you know you sit there on, on the bench and you've you know you're watching the game you're, you're observing it and seeing you know what Phil's doing in, in the top position that I'm going to come on into if I do come on um, but you know I always want to I always want to start of course you know every player does um, but yeah I, I, listen I've been here now what 18 months and I'm still you know getting used to it I'll be honest with you but um, now I'm enjoying it honestly it's a great great group, uh, group of lads and um, and you know it's obviously a pleasure to work under under Pep. We saw the uh, goal your lovely relationship that you got with Riyad Mahrez on the pitch we, we love this I'm, I'm fascinated <laughs> by this in the warm-up always Jack actually it wasn't your best efforts tonight I don't nah, know if, I was, it was a bit windy tonight. wasn't it yeah but still See, it touches too high isn't it there no, it's, we do it all the time. Do you know what? Though, I'm so close with Riyad and we were warming up together and we were saying to her, oh, I'd love to come on here, you know, because the game, it felt a bit more open to, you know, we've had games this season against Everton, Brentford, where they've had a back five and, you know, they've like sat in against us. Um, and today, you know, with a back four and it just seemed a little, like it seemed so much more open than, than games we've had. And we were saying to each other, oh, you know, like obviously desperate to come on and, and obviously the manager told Rui had to go and warm up. He didn't actually tell me. So I thought, I'm going to warm, I thought, I'm going to warm up here. I said, I ain't even coming on. And then next thing you know, Riyad was like, Jack, come, we're going on. I was like, I'll buzz and see you later. So obviously come on and, you know, it was, uh, it was the perfect... Um... The, the manager knows you don't have to get warm, Jack. It's just, it's just in you. By the way, did you know that you two went to the same school? I know, Little Bird yeah. told me. I know. I've known that for a while. Uh, that's where our... Mr. Seacool. Mr. Seacool, yeah. That's where our brainy minds come from. <laughs> <laughs> and your footballing ability. And Let's put it that ability, way. Jack, yeah. thank you so much for talking no, to us. We've got to let you go. Well done, mate. <laughs> St. Peter's well in Solihull, shout out for Jack Grealish, <laughs> the most expensive English footballer of all time and the third most capped English footballer <laughs> of all time in Karen Carney. It's not bad. Jamie snuck on at the end there as well during the interview. What was different when Jack Grealish came on? I don't think it was just Jack Grealish. I just think the change from City was always going to come. They were miles away, miles off it in that first half, and it was a proper Manchester City performance. They changed personnel, but it was still the same setup. But tactically, it wasn't any different. It just felt like there was players in the proper positions. But then, you know, you bring him and, and Mahrez on. They're obviously quality players, but Phil Foden's a quality player. But what wasn't helped for Phil Foden was how poor Manchester City were in the first half. So I think if Jack Grealish had been on the first half, it'd been difficult for him as well because they, yeah. just, they just weren't at it at all. But that I mentioned in commentary the difference between what we saw a couple of nights ago with Arsenal in what they can do to change it from the bench. That was a huge difference tonight in terms of what the quality they bring off the bench and that's what won them the game. Yeah, and when you're struggling and you're bringing these kind of players on, they can lift other players and they can do something brilliant. Um, and, and when they are hungry, as what Jack just said, hungry that they want to play, they produce or they want to produce, you know? And it's, and it's very uh, interesting that today he gives an assist, but it's only a one-touch uh, assist <laughs> instead of all the time dribbling and finding the moment. And that's what Pepper wants. Pepper wants him to stay wide and make the difference in the wide area. And sometimes it's just as simple as a first-time cross. I mentioned in commentary there was a situation where Kevin De Bruyne gave him the ball and then went on the outside of him. And he mentioned himself there, and he's used to having an overlapping fullback, which almost every team in the world is. But because of the way Pep sort of plays his team, what he does with his fullbacks, a lot of the time when Jack gets the ball or any city wide player, but he's one v one, and they always know he's going to go inside. Yeah. And when you're out playing against a packed defence, you're normally doubled up anyway. And that's why you do need that over overlapping fullback just to make it almost a one v one for yourself. But we. No Pep doesn't play like that, so for the wide players, certainly like Jack's type who likes to go inside, he's always going to go into bodies, and that, that is a problem, because I think listening to him there, it, it has been tough for him, and it's, it's difficult to say it's tough at Manchester City, because they're one of the best teams in the world, you know, the football that they play, 
but it's it's obvious he, he has found it difficult and, and difficult to get used to how the uh, Pep Guardiola yeah. sets up. But it feels like he's won the manager's favour right now. I mean, he said before the game that he wasn't starting tonight because he needed to play other players and give others a, a, a game as much as anything. Has he had to learn discipline? Jimmy talks about the fact he's got to stay wide. He's a one-touch rather than dribbling. Well, he just mentioned it there. Uh, Dean Smith says, go and do what you want. Go roam, <laughs> go and be, go wherever you want. And you, you can't do that in this Pep Guardiola team. You, you have your specific roles. I mean, Haaland, his role is to stay central, come to him set, spin in the box, don't get involved in channel ball. So there's specific roles for every single player and you have to be disciplined in that. Um, but I couldn't agree more with Jamie. His right foot keeps coming in. He needed that overlap um, and it's something he might have to keep going on his left foot a bit more, Jack. But um, no, it was good for him to come on and he looks happy. Well, he certainly does. He's, he's, he's just a bubbly uh, yeah. <laughs> energy, isn't it, no, that he's it, always it's, got? It's really refreshing to see a kid, you know, that wants to play, that is yeah. eager to play, you know, that says, oh, I'm going to warm up. And, and actually, sometimes that little thing sparkles the the, mm. the 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 manager by making a, a, a decision to come on it is it's like a, a youthful enthusiasm <laughs> <laughs> really from him give me the chelsea perspective on the goal that they conceded tonight though jimmy i think they could have done better i think when you when you're getting goals against it's, it's majority of the time never a, a one person's mistake um, I think they're organised here, they're, they're fine, they're, they're organised, but then now Cucurella needs to run with Mahrez. This, for me, the keeper can do better. The starting position of the goalkeeper is very good, but I think he can, he can, he can, he can get this. And if Cucurella is in the right position and the goalkeeper misses as he does, he kicks this away with his right foot. I think Jack mentioned... Um in the early part of the game, Chelsea were really narrow and compact. And if you go back to the top of the clip where it was a wide pan, you see actually that. that they're not actually, they're really no. quite open. And that's where City then could do their little joy. They play through, they play through. Like here, I actually think, look, from centre forward to back, I think it's quite yeah. easy for them to play through. Yeah, but and they Kukurea don't play through them. was struggling. And look at De Bruyne now, spare here. Jack's keeping his whip. I think actually they weren't compact in this. And it's tough because you've been running for 60 minutes. You probably haven't had as much as you want. And the keeper makes now he's got to come and get that. That's Jack, a Jack said himself, he really, he, I don't think he wanted to say it, but he felt the keeper was going to claim that. Or do you think he might have been worried, Jamie, potentially about if he if he goes and stretches his arm out, he's just going to push it into someone's path? Yeah, one hundred percent. Of course, he's, he'd be at full stretch, and he's probably just took the chance of letting it go. But it's not right, and it's not just saying that because of sort of the bias of how it's finished up in in the back of the net. It's easy to say it's a mistake because it goes in. But for me, I was not happy with Cucurella right throughout that second half until he came off. No. I mean, yeah. when you're talking about the price tag, yeah, he, he can't defend. I mean, I was watching him in the game 1v1, and there's, there's, when you talk about someone can't defend, I think when someone doesn't want to defend, there's actually worse. And it looked to me like he didn't want to defend in 1v1 I, situations. I, 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 don't, I don't agree. I, I think that he uh, wants to. I think... That he just struggled today. He just struggled because Man City targeted him, targeted him. Um, well, when someone and, and, dives and, in, Jimmy. And, yeah, he did. He did. No, no, no. no. Uh, so what I'm, uh, uh, let me tell you from yeah. a defender's point of view, defending and when you're actually diving, I think a lot of the time it's because you don't want to defend. And if you keep diving in, the fella keeps going past yeah. you. You've got to defend properly. You've got to move your feet. When you, I see you, defenders you, diving in constantly all the time, it makes me feel like they don't want to defend. I, I, I and think get low and be twisting and turning I, I and think get those legs I think burning. his defending is bad, but a lot of times he was overloaded as well. Uh, and he didn't get the help that he should get. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not disagreeing with you that I think he, had, he, he, he had, well, <laughs> that, he, that he wants to defend. I still think that he wants to defend. I just think that he had a really bad game and Man, Man City acknowledged that. And it was 50%, wasn't it? Their attacks over their right hand side was 50, 50%. And you think that, that's targeting him? That's targeting, targeting that yes, side that, that, that's, that's, that's targeted, targeted him, yes. Uh, and, and yeah, he had, a, he had a really bad game. But I, I, I still think that he wants to defend. He just is not a good defender. But the reason to say that is because when I see players diving in constantly, now sometimes you think I can win the ball, I'll go and get it. But when that's your plan against every wide player who comes back at, uh, up against you, that can't be right. And you're saying about he was overloaded. 
I, I think it was 1v1. He was up against Man City's fullbacks don't go forward. It wasn't like a 2v1. No, the midfielder, he's take the, a midfielder, the, the, the midfielder who was in, De Bruyne, yeah, went into the space and then Mares or um, uh, who, who played in the first half attacked him and it was 2v1 at times. Sometimes it was 3v2s. I'm not, I'm not trying to, 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 to talk good to talk good because he didn't have a really good game at all. He was the weakest link. I think Chelsea played really well. But the weakest link was Cucurella. And, and Man City acknowledged that. And it's a problem. He's, he's come from Brighton. He's not had the best start. And today you could see it, but I still think that he wants to def uh, that he wants to defend and he wants to get better, and it has to happen quick. Was the difference arguably, Karen, the the quality that both teams had in reserve? City were able to change it. Chelsea had a couple of injuries as well in the first half. We shouldn't forget that, but they had to react with, with players that possibly aren't ready for this kind of game. I think that is a factor, but for me, the big changing point was at half-time when Pep Guardiola went, you know what, it's not working with the system that we were playing. Rodri is a centre-back, centre-midfielder. I'm going to go revert back to type and bring on the right back who will play as a centre midfielder and then actually overload down the flanks. And where is the weakness? It is Kukurea. I am going to overload him. I am going to dribble at him. I'm going to bring on wingers that do that. So I actually think it was a tactical shift, to be honest. Of course, you want it in the game and you want Chelsea to bring on subs. They don't have it. They're bringing on kids. But I think the difference was just the change in system and then the quality of Manchester City. So it was an overload. <laughs> bit of both. Two on one. Bit That's an overload. No, it's, <laughs> That's an overload. It's both. It's both. Cooper Ed could have been better. More reaction from here at Stamford Bridge uh, in just a moment. Uh, we'll assess where it leaves these two teams as we approach the halfway stage. At the end of this run of festive fixtures, it's going to get even busier in the coming weeks for both these managers, who we will hear from in just a moment. You'll never Three six five. Celebrations in the end for Manchester City after their substitutes made the difference. Jack Grealish teeing up Riyad Mahrez for the only goal of the game. And it's three consecutive away wins for City. Five behind the leaders. Here's Pep Guardiola with Jeff Shreves. Pep, what's your reflection on that victory and how it came about? Uh, we didn't play good in the first half, maybe because I admire, I say thank you for the effort to, to Joao playing on his position and Rodri not even in his position, but uh, I, we decided to put a line up, we could adapt with the players around the pitch if they decide to play five in the back, uh, play a little bit differently. And then the second half was miles, miles, much, much better in all departments and we fought incredible. and. A big result for us, of course. Was it more than just a personnel change that you made? Also, was there a change in the way they're actually playing too? Well, the last games, uh, Rico uh, has the ability to, to make his mate play better. So there are players that play for himself really good, but he has the ability to make all the team play better. Because every moment he does, and he knows exactly when he has to go open inside and, and what he has to do. So playing the level he played in Chelsea Carabao Cup, especially Leeds, Liverpool, and today again, he changed the game. Uh, of course, Manu was, was really good. Uh, I'm happy that Kyle, uh, he finished the first half really good after a long time. And, uh, but yeah, good victory for us. You make, when you make a double sub at half-time, did you already have it in your mind? I might make another double sub quickly too. Uh, yeah. Riyad, I want to put it in the first half because uh, I'm so sorry for Joao because he struggled playing his position. But uh, I thought the space would be there. He's good at one against one in the final third. Um, and I thought uh, Riyad make his uh, quick. But after, for example, second half when Bernardo was better, you know, my substitution. But after, you know, th there are players that need, after World Cup, needs to still to come back and best form. And and hopefully in a few 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 games, next games are going to happen. What would you say about John Stones' form tonight? Uh, he played an ex extraordinary World Cup. John can adapt perfectly in the build-up with three, wider, uh, has the calm, the composer. Uh, he's playing the best level. You know, listen, it was maybe the first sign seven years ago when we arrived together, and. Uh, 
and he is stable here and his mood is good. He's a fantastic, fantastic player. Jack Grealish is lauded for his ability to hold the ball, to dribble with the ball, but was it his cleverness, first time ball, that made the goal? Yeah, he did twice with Haaland in a. Uh, well, no, Haaland with. Uh, yeah, with in, in Leeds and today again. So. Yeah, he came, always came in because he's always, his body language is exceptional. When he plays, he doesn't play, always is positive, he's incredibly loved. And when you are like this and don't have regrets or something, you know, the people believe is something weird, this type of guys always play good. And his contribution was amazing, not just with the ball defensively in one position in the second post, he was there in the position to defend there inside, so yeah, he was really good. What's the biggest thing you think you take out of tonight? Is it, I mean, the obvious answer is the three points to take you closer to Arsenal. Well, we struggled a lot in the first half. It was sloppy, it was slow, it was not with rhythm. And in the second half, it was much, much better for the minute one. And this is what I said many times. We want to lose in this way. Not win. We are closer to win, but we have to lose in this way. Be ourselves. In the first half, we, we struggle a little bit. And the importance of the three points? Yeah, better than to have three points, yeah, definitely. I know there's a lot of football to go, but because of the intensity, even at half-time, you obviously want to win the game, but are you aware we've got to come away with three points here? The players know it, so for a long time we are there on top, close, so we have a, an opponent right now, like I've done fantastic, but uh, we try. So now it's OK, Fair Cup again, Carabao Cup and Old Trafford, a big challenge for us, but important these three, start these three Premier League games. Uh, Stamford Bridge, Old Trafford at home against the Spurs, so start to winning is so important for our mood and our confidence and being close for the, for the, you know, for the, for the top of the league, Arsenal. Thanks, Pep. You're very welcome. Thanks a lot. And it's really interesting to hear him address what, what changed between the first half and second. There, there seemed to be an awful lot about the original plan, Jamie, that, that didn't actually work, is what he's saying. No, it didn't. I mean, he's, he's, he's looking after his players as a manager would in terms of almost taking the blame for putting players in certain situations. I think he was talking about Rodri's role. I mean, as soon as the game kicked off, I could see he was, he was in a back four, but we know obviously Pep changes with and without the ball. Cancelo was almost like a right winger with the ball. It was re very reminiscent of, of how Manchester City set up against Liverpool at Anfield with Nathan Aki as well, almost sort of a, a semi-left back, sort of left-sided centre-back. So there was a lot going on and it didn't work either way I mentioned in commentary in terms of it looked like it was causing a problem defensively, but they weren't doing nothing going forward, never really looked like scoring. I mean, Haaland goes 20 minutes without touching the ball. We didn't see Phil Foden at all. Cancelo just doesn't... He's not a right winger. Uh, and I don't think the actual plan needs to completely change. I don't think it really did too much in the second half. Just players were in the proper positions and everyone just raised a level in terms of energy. I mean, I wouldn't say Man City weren't interested because, you know, it's a big game away at Chelsea. You know, they're fighting for the title. But it had that feel as if, like, it was almost going through the motions really and that's just not Manchester City and, and the energy levels just sort of went through the roof in that first 20-25 minutes of the second half and that's what won them the game. High praise for Rico Lewis. You know, we talked a lot about some of the Chelsea youngsters but we, we're forgetting that Manchester City have an 18 year old here who he's talking about not just um, brings his own individual quality but Pep said he makes everybody around him better makes the team better yeah and I think when I was listening to Jamie there I think City's rhythm was better Pep Guardiola always talks about rhythm and, and speed and I think him coming in into that centre midfield it helped them defensively with Roger as well stopping the counter attacks and just started to get the rhythm and then getting the better players in the position but he's technically brilliant you know to go into centre midfield and have the ball and overload technically he's really really good and for such a young player to be that game intelligence, have that intelligence as well. He's, um, he's very special. I think his understanding of what the job is and what Pepe wants of him, he gets and he does it. And that's why Pepe loves him. He is very disciplined in the organization. With the ball, without the ball. He always plays simple. He runs in the spaces when he needs to go and he keeps the ball. And that's what Pepe wants, you know? Pepe likes players that, that keep the ball and play one or two and sometimes three touches, you know, and, and he's, a, he's a, a, a pepper type. 
Still an interesting night for um, Erling Haaland. Yeah. We, we expect to score every time he crosses the white line. Had to wait 20 minutes, was it, for his first touch, as Jamie was saying. Yeah. Got some words of encouragement from his manager. <laughs> Uh, was very disciplined in his role. Tell us yeah, about this. Yeah, Jimmy. but I, I wouldn't be worried about about it, him not touching the ball for 20 minutes. Uh, he had a tough today. I think Chelsea played him exceptionally well. But he is a kind of player that doesn't need to touch. He, this was his best chance of, of, of the game. Uh, at least he's getting a chance. And normally you would think he would put it away. But I wouldn't be worried about him not touching the ball 20 minutes. He, do, you, do, you think, he, he, do you think? Do you think in the game, Jimmy, he's worried? I, I don't think he is. Do you think? Would you have been worried as a striker that you're actually not touching the ball? Because it does feel strange that someone doesn't touch the ball for 20 minutes. But do you think it affects him mentally? I don't think that it affects him mentally because he plays in a Man City team and they are so good at keeping the ball. If he wants to progress as a player, yeah, he needs to get more with with his back to the goal and and get the ball more. But he doesn't have to really do it in this team. He can wait for when the ball comes in the box and make the difference there. And in a way, that is where they need it. It's what Jack said. Oh, I just crossed the ball and, and, and Haaland would be there. You know, he expected, where is he? Because he know, they know he pops up with, with those, those little moments, you know? You were, you were saying something really interesting during the game, Karen. This is not just the Manchester City men's team, but also mm. it goes through the academy and the women's team as well. Yeah. The role of the centre forward is very particular. Yeah, it was it was Jill Scott actually. She said, um, and she's seen she's been and coach on the academy and seen their system. And she said, Kaz, the centre forwards, their job at City is literally stay high, stay out of the way, and the only time they come is set and spin. You say central at all times. You don't do any channel runs. You don't get involved. It's just spin and get in there. And you're right. When Jack crosses it, you're meant to be there. So at times it's frustrating. That's why you yeah. only have 20 touches of the ball because you stay there. You occupy occupy two centre backs, and you leave the spaces for Gundogan, Silva, De Bruyne. You occupy and you stay central. And I think sometimes centre forwards at, at City, I know at the women's side, have been a little bit frustrated with that. But <laughs> yeah. if you I, get I 21 goals here, like Ellen Harden, it, <laughs> no, it's, it's the Ajax between the posts. It's the Ajax way, isn't it? It's the Ajax way, and and yeah, look, I, I I wouldn't mind playing in that team and staying high because I know I'm going to get chances, and and you know you're going to score goals if you if you are any good at at, at putting them away, you know. So, but that is his, his system. That's what he likes. He doesn't want it too complicated, Pepe. Pepe likes everybody to be in an organisation. And, and today was a typical Man City goal. Explain, so. to, us, explain to us, though, why you, you can't make the runs to the channels in, in, that, in that team. Because you take spaces from other players. Like we saw in the second half, you saw you guys had a good chat about overloads and defenders and stuff like that. With Highland, you agreed. In, you agreed, right? Yeah. I was in the, <laughs> I was in the centre of the pitch doing my job. Um, but you run into other people's areas and then you go out there and when they cross it, you're not there. So again, it's very. Um, not regimented, but it's very structured and you have to stay. Um, yeah. Remember when Thierry Henry said at a Barca, he came off the wing and got two goals and then he told him, no, 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 you've you got to do your job. It, it's never changed in the Pep. You have your job and you stick to it. I, th I think that role of centre forward, let's not forget, he hasn't played with one for, for a couple of years, but certainly it's just trying to make the pitch as big as possible because you're trying to play through opposition teams. So you're trying to drag centre backs, even if it's five yards, five yards further back. And if you remember the only chance he had in the game, it comes from Gundogan getting the ball between the lines. And Chelsea weren't really that stretched there was just a five yard space and he's off and he turns and he goes and, and in the terms of the channel runs as well the reason why he doesn't need to do that because City play with two wingers and how often do you see Kevin De Bruyne Bernardo Silva or Gundogan always make that run run between f opposition fullback and centre back so there's no real need for him to make too many runs is there Arsenal fans might have been getting a bit excited at half-time, Jimmy, do you think? They might be thinking, oh, Chelsea are going to do us a favour here. I think, and rightly so. Uh, Chelsea was playing really well, and I think overall, yeah, second half, they had it very difficult and they couldn't get out. But but then still, Kepa didn't really had to make a save, and I think, I think Chelsea was unlucky today not to get uh, something out of the game. Is it between those two, or can we bring others into the mix, Karen? Um... You know what, Man United's form's coming quite good as well. Um, you know, I, I, I still think they might be sneaky Manchester United, but <laughs> I know Jamie's looking at me again thinking... <laughs> Jamie's looking a bit dazed what, by that. What, comment. Karen? Can, uh, put, put that table back up because 
I got a bite. I, I, looked, I, looked at, I looked at the table at the end of the game. I maybe haven't been looking at it properly. I couldn't believe it, Man United is weird. It, it gave me there. a major fright. Well, well, Jamie, only Manchester United and Fulham have won every game since the World Cup, and that's why they're, they're both up but there. But I was just thinking, if City could have drawn this game, they could have. United would have been two points behind them. With I've the had... chance to go above them after their next game. How exactly. nervous do you feel? I know, honestly, I'm just... Thank God City won tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Do, do we, we don't have any Arsenal believers, do we, really? No. I wouldn't write them off. No, I, I, I'm not writing them off, but my feeling says Man City because they have done it before. You know, Arsenal, this team of Arsenal has not been in this position yet. And it's still 21 games to play. A lot of points. And they're going to get some, here and there, they're going to get some bad games. And it's how they react. And I think that is where Man City will be a and little bit more mature than, than, than Arsenal. And can Arsenal just afford to focus really on that one competition? They are in others, the FA Cup, the Europa League for them returns in March. But this is everything for them, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'd be going full out for that. Arsenal could be even better next season by buying players in, in January or in the summer and still not be in this position. You know, there's a lot of top teams in the Premier League, so I think they've got a huge opportunity. And we keep talking up City. Be before we go any further, Arsenal have been better than Manchester City up until now. But we're expecting Manchester City to go again. But we, we all feel like they will. But City, even tonight, City are not right. They're not at the best. Uh, and, and we all believe that will come. And I think it'll just come down to those two games, not the title totally. But if Arsenal want to really be in the, in the mix for this title, I think they've got to be looking to take four points off Manchester City. But Arsenal have been absolutely fantastic. They've dropped points in three games. It's, pro it's pretty tough to do much better than what they've actually done up to now. So Arsenal have just got to focus on themselves and think if we yeah. continue to keep playing as we're playing, we'll be in there. With the second of those fixtures coming right at the back end of April, scheduled for that time. Anyway, it could well change. But could Manchester United just sneak in there as well then? They could. And, I mean, and is it quite nice for them that there's no real expectation? No one's really talking about them. No, um, well, we are maybe now. But, um, <laughs> but I think it's, it, yeah, it's, it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to... Um, it, it, it's hard to not take them in the form that they're coming into, the players and you know, Casemiro, the discipline of the team, they, they look happy. Um, you know, they're, they're in good form, but it is... I think they're the three teams I'd be looking at. And Newcastle, they're doing well as well, but I still think, you know, Man City uh, will win it. What if Manchester United signed a goal scorer as well this month? Another goal scorer? You're, you're fixated on a goal scorer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind. I like that. Um, yeah, that is where they lack a bit. Uh, they're winning games 1-0 a lot. Uh, defensively, they're solid. The structure is solid. Yeah they can do with a goal scorer then I, I, I think it will be a little bit too early for Man United um, but they do absolutely uh, magnificent at the moment Gary Neville just being that ski shally won't he <laughs> getting all excited <laughs> couldn't make it tonight went on holiday <laughs> Mr. Neville. Yeah. I'm but sure he's not watching Jamie <laughs> but can I, say, can I say one thing L last season when uh, United had the re listen, the awful results against Liverpool. And there was a lot of talk after it saying, United are five years away from City and Liverpool. People were even saying longer that. It just shows this is an absolute nonsense. A top club, if you get the right manager, add two or three players to what you've got, you're nowhere near as far away as what people ever think and supporters get ups and downs. As I said, you think of those games last season and the talk on the back of Man yeah. United. It was no one, never going to be five years to get Manchester United back to where they belong, no chance. And maybe that's a lesson for Chelsea as well, who are licking their wounds again tonight after being beaten by Manchester City here. They've got a, a real pile of injuries mounting Graham Potter has to contend with. We'll get his reaction and talk Chelsea next. Chelsea have been beaten tonight, but they came so close to taking the lead in the dying moments of the first half. Carney took will make her with the effort, and it doesn't get much closer than this. He's giving his reaction now to Jeff Shreves. Carney, at the time, do you think you've got your first Chelsea goal? 
yeah, um, my heart skipped literally as I took the shot. Um, I thought it was him, but um, obviously not meant to be today. Um, just got to keep working and hopefully it will come in the next few games. It's also a case of what might have been because Chelsea probably had the better of the first half. Yeah, um, we worked really hard out of possession, uh, limited their chances and on the ball we created chances ourselves and caused them um, some problems. So yeah, I think we did have the better first half, but unfortunately couldn't find the goal. But yeah, something to definitely build on. What's that like for you when you're called into action unexpectedly so quickly in the game? Um, at times it can be a bit nerve-wracking, but you just have to like switch on, to be fair. Um, I had to get my mind in the game, uh, see how I could help the team myself, and um, obviously as a team as well. So yeah, I'd just say um, a bit nerve-wracking at the start, but then you have to just switch on, yeah. Not just with your effort, but we also saw with the other subs as well, all youngsters, Connor was the senior one, age 22. When you've got youngsters like this, is there almost a, a lack of fear when you get out onto the pitch? Yeah, definitely. Uh, me personally, I feel like um, when I, well, because of how young I am, when I go on the pitch, I don't really have anything to lose, really. Like, I can just express myself. And I think that's the same with obviously the others, Amari and Lewis as well. Uh, I thought they both played really well when they came on and yeah, just got to keep working really. It's an opportunity as well for this group of youngsters right now because of the injuries, because of the situation at the club. Yeah, definitely a big opportunity for us to um, build on it and try break into the team obviously because of the injuries. But um, yeah, just got to keep doing what we're doing really. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well Was that the big positive tonight for Chelsea, Jimmy? A, a glimpse of a brighter future? Well, they, they, they did give uh, Chelsea uh, a lot of energy and, and, and a lot of positiveness. Um, they were bright, they were fearless. The only thing is, you know, when you're putting young players in, you want some senior players around them and you don't want to put four or five in at the same time. Look what Man, uh, Man City is doing with Lewis, it's one. You know, and, and that is where he can grow. And that's what, what, where Chelsea needs to get to, my opinion. But they did ever so well today. And, and I think they sparkled the place today when they came in. Is, is the problem, if, if there is one, Karen, that they're not coming into a team that is flying right now and it's a team that's trying to grind out results? Yeah, I think, like, when you're a young player, you, you want to come into an environment that's flourishing and you're right, and when it's not... Is a struggle, and you're trying to be raw. You're trying to I think, bring energy to this stadium. I said at the start show, you know, bring Stamford Bridge alight, and they, they did with the energy. But when you're a young player, you probably don't have that that quality, that finesse that you require when you get a little bit more experience. And when the, maybe the rest of the team are a little bit low, it's really, really hard that you're looking to a young player to spark and enlighten you really, and that's really hard. Here's the Chelsea manager. Only 11 games into his reign, remember Graham Potter now with Jeff Shreves. Graham, obviously not the result you wanted it. But was it a much better performance? Yes, yeah, it was. Um, when you consider everything in terms of losing Raheem really early and then Christian as well. So I thought the lads gave everything. It was a spirited performance. We had some opportunities against obviously a top team. So uh, apart from the result, which would, of course, we never like to lose, um, I'm proud of the players in terms of everything they gave. Injury wise, you said to us before the game, it never rains but it pours. You must feel like you're in a downpour. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough at the moment. Uh, I must admit, and, um, <clears throat> and I feel for the for the boys, of course. So um, we have to stick together. It's one of the, one of those times. Um, disappointing to lose the guys, but um, the players that came in, the players that were on the pitch, gave everything, and, and that's all you can ask for. Any idea how long those two injuries are? No, not at this stage. Sorry. On the goal, could you have done better in any areas? Well, I thought we, we committed too many men a little bit too high to, to press them um, and then opened us up and then you have to credit their quality. I think it's a good goal from their perspective. But I think we probably got caught a little bit in terms of uh, Kepper and Mark thinking each other could have dealt with it. But it's, it is what it is, the quality of the opponent's high. And um, in any goal, you think you can do a little bit better. But like I said, the, the, the goal's a top goal from Manchester City's point of view. There's also a huge difference in what they were available in terms of on their bench, is what you have. Yeah, but that's where we're at at the moment. That's what I say. I mean, there's nothing to... It is It is what it is, as I said before. Um, we can't complain about it. We have to just get on with it. Um, the boys that were on the pitch gave everything tonight. 
and um, they did what we asked them to do. There was some spirit, there was some quality, there was some opportunities. Like I said, Manchester City don't give you much, but I thought we earned um, something from the game, but it is what it is. Does it underline how short you are when Conor Gallagher is the senior man of the three subs coming on? Uh, yeah, I didn't realise that. Um, yeah, we had to freshen it up. I think we had to. You could t tell that the boys had put in a shift, which is which is normal against Manchester City. But Lewis and Amari are young players that are just starting out, and 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 Connor also I thought gave everything when he came on. So it's nice to have that uh, personality from the bench. You said just now we need to stick together. Is that very much the case of everybody at the club and the fans as well? Because you know the results are not what you want or anybody wants indeed at the moment. But you're also you're going through a transitional period. You've got a huge injury list as well, and you're trying to get players into the club. So how testing a time is this for you? And do you need patience, which is something you don't often get in football? Well, you, you always have to take your responsibility. And when we're not playing well, you want to improve that and, and, and um, take that responsibility. But at the same time, you, you hope that people look at the, the whole context and put it into perspective and see exactly where we are and exactly what we've been through and what we've had to deal with. Um, but at, at the same time, emotions are high. That's how it is. You have to um, ride out any storm and try to stay level and keep the players going. Like I said, the, I think the crowd today appreciate the performance. I think they were behind the team. The, they could see the team giving everything. So um, our supporters have been fantastic with us. You've got one over the line, well, a couple. Ben Belly Shile. What can you tell us about him? Well, he's a young, um, he's a young centre back that's played a few games already. Um, physically really good, left-footed, which is uh, a profile that we maybe haven't got so much. So he comes into the squad and um, we're excited to work with him. Thanks, Grant. Thank you. Cheers. Could be the first of many. Watch this space here at Stamford Bridge, but certainly the crowd were right behind Graham Potter and his side tonight. You, you sense that here. And given the injury to Mason Mount in the build-up to the game, given they lost Raheem Sterling so early, Christian Pulisic as well in that first half, could we actually have asked much more than we saw from them tonight? No, I think Chelsea did really well. I actually feared for them coming into this game, having watched the performance at, at Forest and, you know, thinking, you know, Arsenal dropped points and I thought City had come here with almost like a real point to prove and, and how they performed at the start of the second half. I expected that from minute one and I thought it would be a long night for Chelsea. But I actually thought Chelsea would be much the better side in the first half and just lacked a final pass to really put themselves in front. That was the only problem with them in, in the first half and dealt with City... For the majority of the game, really, you think what they were up against, the quality City had, there wasn't that many big chances. Even when City was sort of back to the best for 20, 25 minutes, start of the second half, I thought Chelsea did really well. And I think we, we've highlighted the results before the, the before tonight's game. It's not just the results, it's the performances within those results. And I think the performance tonight, Chelsea supporters, as he rightly said, were, were pretty pleased. I'm up there amongst them in the commentary position. They were getting right involved, you know, in, in, in that first half and they were playing well. Even in the second half, that sort of last 15 minutes when the young players came on and gave them that energy, I think there was something to get behind for the Chelsea fans. And as I said, for the Chelsea supporters, the reason they've been a little bit disgruntled has not just been results, it's been performances as well. This is, do you think then, a performance they can build on, Karen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, everything Jamie said, I can't agree anymore, really. Um, and this actually might now suit Graham Potter a little bit. Now, of course, you want all your main players, but this is a group he's got to work with and he's got to get them better and galvanise them even more. Um, so I, I think he, they've done really well tonight. He couldn't ask for any more and the fans couldn't either. In terms of um, this club where it is right now, Jimmy, are, are we starting to realise that this is a big transformation project? Oh, yeah. That Graham Potter is undertaking. It is, it is, it is a big transition. First of all, new owners. First of all, totally different new ideas because they want younger players. Abramovich was always buying majority already finished players to win straight away. These guys want to build. If, if, that, is, if that is the aim, then they need to give Potter time and let him get this, his, really his stamp on, on, on the club. The club wants to be global bigger and better so it, it, in a way it's an exciting times they want to get a bigger stadium a better stadium they're looking at land they're looking at all different stuff to increase the capacity here so it's 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 a very very good time only obviously they're suffering at the moment with the results and and a little bit of luck like today sterling off Pulisic off is going against them 
but they need to keep on going. They need to keep on believing in what they are doing. Still stay with the plan, and uh, it will be it will be fine. I, I, I think I think it will be. You know, the future is is, is bright here. But not just yet. Not the immediate no, future. No, no, you think top four's gone? I think so. Yeah, I, I said that last uh, the, uh, a few days ago that that it will be difficult to get in the top four. It will be even harder to attract the right players when you're not in the top four. Um, they will have to be creative with it. But I think over the years, I think this club will, will come back and, 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 and be, be top. Jimmy, thank you very much. Karen, thank you as well for your company tonight. Jamie, thank you for rejoining us. Enjoy your own little sojourn, whatever you do over the FA Cup weekend. <laughs> <Sojourn>. <laughs> Lucky Mouse, I'm still recovering from on commentary. Have you ever heard that before? <laughs> Next weekend, Friday Night Football, Villa Leeds from seven. Saturday Night Football, Brentford, Bournemouth from five. And Super Sunday returns with Newcastle, Fulham and the North London Derby. Spurs back in form, take on leaders Arsenal. And as we do pause,